Well, it gives, gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Uh, Jennifer Johnston, who <laughs> will be sharing the results of her study on the health experiences of long-haul truck drivers and the relationship with a primary care provider. Now, uh, Jennifer actually has got two professions. <laughs> uh, she has got an undergraduate degree in electrical engineering, and uh, she has her MD from McMaster and did her postgraduate studies in family medicine at the University of uh, Calgary, where she uh, obtained her CCFP. Uh, she has got her practice in Pinatanguishing, and I actually know where that is because my family's <laughs> cottage is around the corner from that, uh, that place, so I actually know the main street <laughs> that's there. Uh, and also, she has been active as a hospital and ER physician at the Georgian Bay General Hospital in Midland for the past 25 years. Uh, she's sort of a sporty woman, I guess. <laughs> you enjoy kayaking, uh, uh, cycling, skiing, etc. Uh, her clinical research interest uh, basically came about because of her interactions with her patients. And I think I'll just pass it over to you so you can continue your story. Okay. Thank you. Um, and thank you, everybody, for um, attending this uh, presentation today on the health experiences of long-haul truck drivers and the relationship with their primary care provider. Um, before we get started, I wanted to acknowledge my two supervisors, Dr. Evelyn Vingillis, who you just heard from, and Dr. Amanda Terry. Hmm. Not sure. Your electrical engineering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, just trying to, sorry. Not sure how to get that. Oh, okay, great. Yep, yeah, sure, that's fine. Um, okay, so for today's uh, presentation, I'm going to talk a little bit about the background of long-haul truck driving in Canada. I'm going to talk about why it's important to study the health of this um, occupational group. I'm going to go through study one which and study two, both in this thesis. One followed the other. Study two follows study one. And then I'm going to talk about the limitations, the integrated findings for these two studies, and finally, the implications and ideas for future research. So long-haul truck drivers are essentially transport truck drivers that li drive long distances. So if they need to be away from their homes overnight, they're considered a long-haul truck driver. Um, and they play a vital role in the Canadian economy. Um, so about 70% of what is produced in Canada for domestic consumption or use is um, transported by long-haul trucks. Um, additionally, two-thirds of what we export to the US is transported by long-haul truck drivers. So this is a, an important group. Um, this sector of the economy is growing at a rapid rate, gr um, at about twice the rate of any other sector of the economy. Um, there are a number of reasons for this, but this is creating a great demand for long-haul truck drivers. And this um, demand is being met uh, to in large part by new Canadians, um, the largest group coming from South Asia. And to the point where now one-third of all transport truck drivers in Canada are um, new Canadians. So this is now the most common occupation for men in Canada, and that's just been in the last couple of years. So this is, um, so why study the health of this group? Not only are they a big group, but they're also a group that suffers greater health risk than people who work in other jobs. Um, and we know that this health risk is associated with more crashes. So the greater the number of health risks that a transport truck driver has, the more likely they are to be involved in a crash. So this has great uh, public health uh, implications. We know that in Canada, um, tr transport trucks are involved in 20 to 23 percent of all fatal collisions. Um, and that despite it being a big group, uh, there's very little research done in Canada on this occupational group and no research done worldwide on how this group uses primary care. So study one, um, ha the purpose of this study um, was to understand the health experiences of long-haul truck drivers as expressed in their own words. It was also, the purpose was to explore um, how the, these drivers use healthcare and the relationship of their primary care provider in Ontario. 
So the, method, the methods that we used, it was a qualitative study with a phenomenological approach. Um, and the recruitment of these long haul truck drivers um, were Ontario residents and they were truck drivers that were mostly recruited at a highway 401 truck stop <laughs> uh, between August and November of 2018. And the data that was collected from these truck drivers was um, semi-structured, in-depth interviews that were transcribed and uh, that were rec audio recorded and transcribed verbatim. In analyzing these transcribed uh, interviews, we coded them independently and then together as a three-member team using the iterative and interpretive process. And the themes and sub-themes that were identified through this process um, represented the lived experience of these long-haul truck drivers. A final sample, there were 13 participants. They ranged in age from 26 to 70. There were 11 male truck drivers, two female, and two drivers who had um, immigrated to Canada from South Asia in the previous 10 years. And there were four themes that emerged from our analysis. The first was keep on trucking. <laughs> the second, hidden separate world. The third theme, dehumanization. And the final theme was isolation. I'm gonna explain each of these themes to you. So the first theme, keep on trucking, um, is, uh, it reflects the attitude held by the majority of truck drivers towards their work. Um, it, it described the response they had to all the numerous challenges that they, came, um, they encountered. Um, it also reflects how the participants ignored um, and health problems of physical and psychological, um, that were physical and psychological, and um, that they persevered despite this. Um, one truck driver described this uh, when asked about what he did when he became ill or injured on the road, he said, uh, you ignore it for the most part. You tend to be, you know, like Iron Man, right? Like nothing's going to stop you. The second theme, hidden uh, separate world, uh, reflects more than one dimension of living in a hidden and separate world. Uh, the participants valued their independence and being hidden and separate from a constantly overseeing employer. And one participant described it, just solitude, not having to answer to anybody. You know what I mean? You're your own boss. I own my own truck, so I do my own thing. I get to choose where I go, when I go, and how I go. Hidden, living in a hidden separate world also reflects how the participants felt that their efforts to deliver loads through co challenging conditions such as road closures, adverse weather, um, et cetera, were unappreciated by others. And the majority of participants described feeling unseen when driving, unseen by other vehicles on the road, which made them anxious about being involved in a, in a crash. One participant described it. It's not only like you and I am driving, I'm also trying to save everybody who is around me because they're those people who are not aware of me, like what I can do to them. Lastly, the theme hidden separate world reflects how the long haul truck drivers um, often hide their concerns from their primary care provider. One participant described it, you don't tell your family doctor everything because if you tell them everything you feel, well, the first thing you know, you'll get a letter in the mail saying you're gonna lose your license. The third theme, dehumanization, um, reflects how the participants felt dehumanized in many aspects of their work environment. There are four sub-themes under dehumanization. Their unmet basic needs, disrespectful treatment from others, substance use, and the truck cannot get to the doctor. I'm going to describe those for you. The first one, unmet basic needs, um, it reflects how the participants um, struggle to meet their basic human needs. Basic human needs for safety, nutritious food, exercise, restorative sleep. One participant um, described um, what happens with his sleep. You're beat because you didn't get no 10 hours sleep. You might have got five, but I doubt it. The second th sub-theme, disrespectful treatment of others, reflects how the participants felt universally disrespected by groups that they come in contact with when delivering loads. Uh, groups such as the public, the Ministry of Transportation, customers, employers. Uh, regarding uh, their experience at the U.S. border, one participant said, I don't cross the border anymore for that, that exactly that reason. You get degraded a lot by these people. The third sub-theme, substance use under dehumanization, um, reflects how the participants believed use of substances was sometimes warranted to meet the superhuman demands of their work. Regarding stimulants, one participant shared, it's just meth, ice. I don't use it, but I could get you it in the parking lot right now if I wanted to. It's that accessible all the time. Regarding smoking, another one said, we all smoke, and that's horrible for you, right? But we're not going to quit because it helps with the stress. It helps with the anger. It helps with everything, so you're not going to quit. 
The fourth sub-theme under dehumanization is the truck cannot get to the doctor, and that really reflects how the participants did not feel they had adequate access to the human right of health care. One participant described it, I never make it there to the family physician's office. I've tried and tried and tried. The fourth and final theme under study one is isolation. And um, isolation represents the three spheres where these long-haul truck drivers uh, experience isolation. So that's isolation from home, isolation at work, and isolation from their primary care provider. Um, regarding um, isolation at from home, um, one participant summarized what this experience is like. I think psychological health is maybe one of the biggest strains in trucking, what you're missing from your home area. Whether, whether it be the election, your grandson's hockey game, whether it, not, it be not seeing your own sons and daughters, whatever, being away when your father passes away and not being home. Isolation at work. Another participant explained how they no longer meet up with other long haul truck drivers. Before, there used to be more truckers having four knife meals and socializing in a restaurant. Now, Newer people come in. They bring all their food, so a lot of restaurants have shut down because of it. The third sub-theme, isolation from the primary care provider, um, it, it sort of it reflects that how primary care providers do not um, understand the trucking world. One uh, participant commented on this. He, the doctor, doesn't know much about truck driving. He just doesn't have a clue, and I don't think he cares to learn. Another participant explained their experience of, being able, of not being able to confide in their primary care provider. I'd like to be able to talk to my doctor about some of the mental health issues I've been facing, but because of the punitive nature of how the licensing system is set up for truckers, it makes it difficult, right? So the conclusions of study one, we know from the themes that keep on trucking that this uh, likely is an attitude that's beneficial for the trucking industry and for the Canadian economy as a whole. However, uh, long -haul truck driver, it, it suggests that long-haul truck drivers often ignore their health problems. The theme Hidden Separate World suggests um, that the adverse at work environment of long-haul truck driver that they must tolerate is largely unrecognized. And that truck drivers experience regular anxiety about being in a crash and that they keep many prob health problems hidden from their primary care provider. The theme dehumanization um, suggests that much is working against long-haul truck drivers, not just physically, but psychologically and socially. Um, and that for working in this world, truck drivers pay with their health. Lastly, isolation suggests that long-haul truck drivers are not well connected anywhere. Uh, it's difficult for them to prote form protective relationships, including a relationship with their primary care provider. So in study two, the purpose of this study was to describe the reflections of focus groups of primary care providers on the health experiences of long-haul truck drivers. So in this part, we, we took the, um, the findings from study one and presented them, them in focus groups to primary care providers. And the other purpose of this study was to explore the experiences of these providers in caring for their long-haul truck driver patients. The method that we used was qualitative again, but this was a descriptive uh, qualitative approach. Um, and the family physicians and nurse practitioners uh, were contacted by email, and that's how we recruited them in the City of London and the towns of Alora and Midland, Ontario. The data that was collected were focus group um, interviews and we used a semi-structured interview guide and the discussions were audio recorded and transcribed verbatim. In the analysis, uh, um, there was the independent and team approach to the coding using a, the iterative and interpretive process and the C themes and sub-themes that were identified were the direct reported experiences of the primary care providers. In the final sample, there were 16 participants in three focus groups. 13 of them were family physicians and three were nurse practitioners. Nine were women, seven men, and they ranged in age from 32 to 65, and years in practice ranged from one to 39. So the overarching finding from this study is that it's difficult to provide patient-centered care to long-haul truck drivers. Um, one participant uh, described it, we just don't have a relationship with them, right? That's the bottom line. He's just coming in because they have to have a family doctor. There are two themes that uh, emerge from study two. The first one is that the world of long haul truck driving is unknown. And the second is the elephant in the room. 
The first theme, the world of long haul truck driving is unknown, uh, reflects how when presented with the findings from study one, the focus groups were surprised by some of the lived experiences of the long haul truck drivers in study one. Uh, for example, reflecting on the significant psychological stress reported by the truck drivers, a primary care provider said, I wonder if it's the hidden piece with the mental health. I don't recall many of my patients who are long haul truck drivers even talking about that. That's not even a topic. Another participant agreed. They will not come in and say, I am sad or depressed. The elephant in the room um, refers to the driver's medical exam, uh, which screens truck drivers for fitness to drive and is the responsibility of primary care providers in Ontario and, uh, to provide to their long haul truck driver patients at regular intervals. <coughs> the elephant in the room is, um, use that term because this uh, driver's medical is present whenever the primary care provider and the long haul truck driver are together, even when those visits are unrelated to the driver's medical exam. There are three sub-themes under the elephant in the room. The primary care cannot be given, primary care cannot be received, and finally, finding common ground is difficult. The first sub-theme, primary care cannot be given, um, it, it refers to the experience of, of the focus group participants of not being able to carry out their usual roles as primary care providers. Um, one participant uh, described this experience. It's been my most challenging group of patients because they can't make appointments, they never go for hemoglobin A1Cs, and trying to encourage them to adopt healthy lifestyle choices with their careers is really difficult. Another commented, it's hard to feel like you're being their advocate if you're reporting something that the patient perceives as jeopardizing their job security. Um, under the second sub-theme under the elephant in the room is primary care cannot be received. Um, and this refers to the participants' impression that long-haul truck drivers avoid them. One described it. Sometimes it's a real avoidance of illness rather than a pursuit of health that's going on. It seems that mainly what they, the truck drivers, are trying to do is just avoid the perception or even the truth of being ill. You can do that by avoiding your primary care provider, so it gets really dangerous. The third sub-theme, finding common ground is, is difficult, refers to the regret of the focus group participants um, to not being able to connect with their truck driver patients. Uh, one patient, uh, sorry, one participant described it, I always felt like a bit of a failure, like I wasn't connecting with them or wasn't able to problem solve around some of their challenges. Another participant reflected, I think for us as family doctors, we would rather look after them really look after them, you know? I mean, I would probably be happy if I don't have to be the one that makes the final decision on their driving ability. So the conclusions from study two, uh, from the themes, the world of long haul truck driving is unknown, of truck, truck drivers is unknown. Um, we know that the primary care participants um, knew about the physical trucking environment. Um, however, the social, psychological, and economic context of, truck, of trucking is poorly understood. And the other conclusion from study two, from the theme elephant in the room, is that primary care providers seem to have difficulty reconciling their dual roles of protector of public safety and primary care uh, provider. And that this means, um, this medical examination means that, tr uh, suggests that long haul truck drivers are likely avoiding important components of primary care. So in integrating the two studies, we know from the study one participants and the study two participants that they identified the same impediments to a therapeutic relationship, even though they're in different studies, um, although from their unique viewpoints. And the first was that long haul truck drivers need primary care providers to understand their complex world. And that's because long haul truck drivers are immersed in this world for days to weeks at a time. And um, this world has far reaching impact on their well-being. The second integrated uh, finding is that nurse practitioners and family physicians providing driver's medical exams to the long haul truck driver patients uh, means that the relationship is more transactional than therapeutic. And this is because truck drivers must present themselves as well enough to drive at all visits. And primary care providers must often play the role of protector of public safety. So this suggests that patient-centered care is not provided nor received at the regret of both groups. 
So to go through the limitations, in study one, the long-haul truck drivers were recruited at one truck stop in southern Ontario, and it was really limited to the people who agreed to participate. There were many who didn't participate, and we don't know whether their health experiences and their relationship with their primary care provider might have been different. Uh, similarly, in study two, um, these nurse practitioners and family doctors that were involved in the study were volunteers, and we don't know if the people who did not want to volunteer for the study might have had different opinions about their long-haul truck driver patients and different responses to study one findings. Uh, so the, this uh, thesis imp has implications for primary care providers, uh, for healthcare policy and planning, for public health and transportation ministries, and finally for the transportation uh, industry. I'm just going to focus on the first two given the limitations of time. Um, Essentially, um, this thesis suggests that long truck haul truck drivers may not be, be receiving optimal or any primary care, um, and removing some of the barriers to receiving this care would be worthwhile. Uh, this would include considering designating medical uh, assessors who would determine the fitness to drive component, and that would free primary care providers to uh, provide patient-centered care. Um, another barrier that would would be uh, that's important to reduce is the physical distance between the long-haul truck drivers and their primary care providers. So ideas such as um, mobile health units, uh, using alternative health care providers at truck stops, um, connecting primary care providers and long-haul truck drivers digitally um, uh, are ideas to reduce that, that gap between them. Um, lastly, I think for any of the healthcare providers that come into contact with long-haul truck drivers, it'd probably be useful to be to know more about this vulnerable and hard-to-reach population. Future research ideas. Um, in Canada, we don't have a national survey. They do in the U.S. on the health and healthcare uh, use of long-haul truck drivers. This would be a really important database to be able to design policies around and would we would know whether some of the findings from today are generalizable. Another idea would be how we transport truck drivers, fitness to drive, how is that best determined? That could be uh, an interesting research area. Um, and lastly, if uh, you did have designated medical providers ta take over the fitness to drive component, um, would access and quality of primary care improve? And that's it, thank you. <laughs>